In video one, we saw how to use Visual Basic, strip out data from a Microsoft Excel table, use the data to create text files, upload them to our WordPress site, and use a bit of PHP to include them in our WordPress page. The problem, while the process was pretty heroic, the results were a bit dull. So we're going to see how to improve this. So let's go back to our Excel workbook. This time we're on sheet two. You probably have to enable macros and set up the Visual Basic Editor again. As before, we'll keep the coding as simple as possible. This time we're looking at five universities in Yorkshire. And if you want to copy this, go to the university's Wikipedia pages and get all the details from there. In addition, we've copied the first paragraph of their Wikipedia entries and their Wikipedia URLs. What we're going to do is create two files for each university. This should give us more flexibility when we design our WordPress page. So we've set up our subroutine title and like before declared some variables. There's one integer variable n, which will again we'll use as our loop counter and all the rest are string variables. You can see str text and output text are a little different. They are called arrays and an array is a variable that can hold several values at once. With str text, we're going to create two text strings and then combine them together later on. And because we're going to create two separate files for each university, we'll use our output text array for both files. Notice in both arrays, we've specified just how many values we need. Okay, on with the code. Again, we're ensuring we're on the right sheet by selecting it and we have the same for next loop we had before. This will run around our code five times with integer variable n increasing by one each time round. This will allow us to use n as a cell's row index so we can drop down from one row to the next in our data table. Now we're picking up the values from each cell and putting them into our variables. Notice SGR students in the Excel table it's a number and we want a string. So we use the convert string function to change it from one to the other. We're going to use each university name as the main identifier for our file names. And as we're going to create two files for each university, we need two file paths. As you can see, the only difference between them is that one file path ends with the word text file and the other with wiki file. Now things get interesting. We've got two text strings in our str text array, which we'll join together shortly. And those who know any HTML will recognize what's happening. As we said, the power of this technique is that you can put just about anything in the text file along with the basic text and Excel data. And that includes the full range of HTML, CSS styling, images, videos, and even coding scripts. The first string starts off with an HTML div tag, which includes a styling property to increase the font size. We then add the university name, drop down a line and add the number of students. Then we drop down lines again, adding the vice chancellor and the URL to the university website. And now we simply join them together in one larger output file. The second output file is much like the first, we're joining the Wikipedia comment and the link to the Wikipedia article in one string. The last part of the loop outputs both files on the same channel number, but using different file paths. And that's it. After closing the channels, we're off around the loop again. Okay, so that's the detail. If we run the routine, the files will be created and saved, probably in less than half a second. And now we should have 10 files, two for each university in our desktop folder. If you've seen the last video, you'll know how to upload files to your WordPress site, so we'll skip the details. Just remember to load them into the PHP folder we set up in the WordPress directory WP content. Now for our WordPress page, make sure you have the insert PHP plugin we mentioned installed and add a new page to practice on. We've called ours PHP text files. Click on publish and WordPress will create a page with a permalink called php-text-files, which we'll need in a minute. In the text mode, we'll add these lines. So just let's pause to make sure you understand this. 
This is the code on our page to be stored on our WordPress server. When a user wants to see the page, the server will look at these PHP instructions and construct the page from our files, which it will then send on to the user. By the way, notice the square brackets around both insert PHP tags. The apostrophes at the end of each file path, followed by a semicolon. Most important, PHP is very particular about semicolons. Click on View Page and the page with our Excel details and the University of Bradford data we've added looks like this, which is a big improvement on the last video's output. But of course we've got a problem. How do we get to see the other universities' pages? So what we'll do is add an HTML drop-down menu with all our universities to choose from. And we'll do this on the same page. We'll go through this code step by step. Let's start with our drop-down menu in an HTML form at the bottom of our page. Each option comes in two parts. The bit you see in the menu and the value of that selection. In our case, we've kept the university names for each part, but the values could be numbers, IDs, other text, in fact, virtually anything. So when the user makes a selection, let's say the University of Leeds, and click Submit, the value of that selection will be attached to the variable you can see called uni, and then sent back to the page PHP text files on our server. Now the server's compiler will then fetch the PHP text files page and carry out any PHP instructions on it. So let's look at that PHP. The super global PHP variable $get receives the value of uni passed to it and transfers it to a variable that we've created called unistring. By the way, all PHP variables begin with a dollar sign. Now look at our PHP includes. They're almost the same as we had a few minutes ago, but instead of having a fixed university name, we have the variable unistring, which could be any of the universities in our menu. And if we had a hundred universities, they could be any one of those. Now you may remember that the string connector in Visual Basic was the ampersand. In PHP, it's the full stop or period. Again, notice how the apostrophes are used and of course those semicolons. If we update and view the page, the first thing that will happen is that it will crash because we haven't chosen the university yet. So do that and off we go through the menu. Obviously in real life we probably have the drop down menu on another page, but we've done this so you can see the circularity of the process. The user makes a choice, the server receives the selection, builds the page and passes it back to the user. Well, we've made a significant improvement since our last video, but whilst by using Excel as a database, we can use its power and keep control of our data, things get really difficult when we have hundreds of files to manage, particularly when it comes to searching through that data. And we'll look at that problem in the next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching.